Rocket Man. <laughs> Rocket Man. How's it going, guys? We are here in Oye Dimelo Cinema Club with your lovely hosts, JP Sabrunos, Isa uh, Valadez, Jason Echoes, hey, 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 hey. and me, Steve Des. Hey! Uh, George is not here because uh, we figured out he was a white man and we don't want white people here. Oh. You're out of here! Uh, so he's out of the cinema club. No, he probably didn't see the movie either, and that's why he's not here. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this week we watched Rocket Man. Did, did everybody see the movie? Did everybody have time to see this incredible piece of cinema? Watched it about yes. an hour ago. <laughs> you watched it about an hour ago? <laughs> it, was, it was my choice, and I barely saw it an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, me too. I just finished, like, 30 minutes ago. Look at you guys. Had you seen it before this? This JP? No, I have not. I only picked it because it was on a uh, top ten to watch list on Hulu. Mm. Nice. Got you. Yeah. Wait, wait. So Hulu has a top ten movies to watch list. No, nah, I just googled it. <laughs> uh, article. Okay. Yeah, it was an article. Yeah. So what what were your initial thoughts of the movie? Well, for, first of all, what 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 did you guys think the movie was gonna be about? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious, but <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Like just uh, base, I like I, I learned I learned a lot through the movie. I did not I, know it was gonna be about. I thought it was gonna be about Kim Jong uh, Il, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> No, oh, because of the rocket man thing. By the oh, way, God. by the way, Jason, you are frozen. <laughs> yeah, you guys are frozen on mine. Oh, okay. oh man! Now, now you're back. <laughs> My, mine's doing the same thing. I'm back. Uh, sorta, yeah, ish, yeah. Now, 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 at least on my end, this is just on my end. The person that seems with the most problems is Jason right now. Damn. Yeah, he's frozen. Oh, okay. Uh, but that's just me. Huh. Oh, man, let me turn off these other internet. You have to minimize all your uh, uh, hentai screens. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all the anime prawn you got going on there. But yeah, let's let's dive in into this Rocket Man review because that's what people are tuning in for. Uh, so, what it, it, initial thoughts for me? I didn't expect it to be, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning it was like heavy, leaning towards musical. Yeah. And I was just like, I hope this is not the route of the entire movie, because <laughs> if not, I'm gonna hate it. Uh, <laughs> But it was actually, it was good, at least in my opinion. Like, I, I, there's movies, like, for example, the last musical movie that I saw that I really hated was Les Miserables, Les Miserables, whatever that's called. Yeah. That one I couldn't, with Hugh Jackman and all those people, I couldn't stand that movie. Oh, they didn't give you a chance to breathe. It was just no. uh, gone going singing. Yeah, like every second. And that's what I liked about Rocket Man that it wasn't every second a song. There were yeah. pivotal moments that had a song, but uh it wasn't like every second they're hammering you with a song, you know? Yeah, no, it was definitely like it was a good marriage between like just a regular biopic and a musical. And there was even the musical numbers like they filmed it very much like just a movie, which I kind of liked because like sometimes like the one movie I could think about is like Hairspray. When you watch Hairspray, the, the, the musical movie with uh, John Travolta, you could tell half the, the sets are fake and stuff like that. You could tell like, oh, it's basically we're watching a musical you know, on a fucking movie. But like this one, I felt like the movie came first, then the musical came second. 
but like I didn't I didn't expect it I didn't expect the movie to be about uh, Elton John's uh, struggle with sobriety because even starts off with with him at an AA you know which took me by surprise. <laughs> Yeah, same here. Like I uh, personally, I mean, I'm, I'm, that's the majority of music related biopics like heavily touch upon like drug use. Yeah, but for sure. what I liked about this one in particular was that it it just highlighted like what at least to me, like the drug thing was a thing to mask over his childhood. Like in particular, like all he wanted was his dad's attention and like a hug from his dad and the love of his dad and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, I'm happy that at the very end, I'm keeping super forward, but I'm happy that at the very end, he found, you know, someone he could love and the whole deal and whatever. But it just seemed like throughout the movie, even throughout his career, literally it didn't matter how many people, how many shows he sold out and stuff like that. All he wanted was the approval of his dad. And yeah. it wasn't until he went and visited him and saw, oh, he's being like a better dad to his new kids. <laughs> and to me, even that I'm a grown up now, he's still being the same asshole he's always been. Like, fuck yeah. that guy. And that was the moment that he, I think he kind of started sort of like resolving his childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I liked about the movie is that it, it touches more on like the, not doesn't necessarily hit it on the nose that tells you this is what it's about. But yeah. uh, it, it touches the subject of drugs to mask that it's really about childhood trauma and how he went to like heal it and the whole deal. What are, your, what are your thoughts, Jason and Isaac? <laughs> um, I, I thought that the pacing was really fast, so I didn't really get a chance to um, really get to know the characters. It was, it was just like a, a summary of his whole life and career. But I agree with you in that that was the strongest part of the, the movie, um, the relationship, I guess, with himself like trying to i thought it was powerful when he hugged his uh like like a projection of his childhood self because yeah. that's that's the love that he didn't get from his dad that he needed and that was what i feel really kind of helped him through all the madness and kind of move on with his life so i thought that was a really strong point but um like visually it was really good i mean it was a musical but the, the things I have issues with were that, like, a lot of the wide shots were CGI, so it kind of took me out of the movie. And and just the pacing, I, I just wish that it kind of slowed down just a little bit just to get to know the characters. But overall, it's a solid movie. Really good. I enjoyed it. So I'm going to say that I take great umbarge with you guys not liking musicals. Uh, being cinemaphiles. <laughs> I used to very much be in your same boat, but then like I, I, I said that this couldn't possibly be true and to be a well-rounded cinema person, I'm going to sit through some musicals so I find some good ones. And honestly, it didn't take very long. I found a whole bunch of really great ones like right away. There are a ton of fantastic musicals. Um, and you guys probably either haven't seen them or you're just not thinking about them. Uh, but I will say that Rocket Man, I didn't even really consider it a musical musical, um, be only because like all of Elton John's music, like his catalog is already so iconic that, I mean, it is definitely a musical, but it's not your traditional musical like, you know, uh, Hammerstein or whatever those guys are called, yeah. you know, um, because it's like, these are all pop songs. These are all rock songs. Yeah, much uh, like in the vein of like Moulin Rouge or something like that. Right, exactly. You know, something that's like already been adapted on Broadway or whatever. But I think, and plus I'm a huge Elton John fan. Like I love his music. Um, I did like how the movie was about self-healing um, and masking his pain through all these different things, through sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know, that's the story of his life. Um, 
it says this meeting has been upgraded to the host now included. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I thought it was about to shut off on me. No, 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 no. So that's what I really enjoyed about the movie. I mean, it was just an inside look into this, you know, super mega rock star, pop star's life. What I really liked, though, and, you know, movies hit you depending on where you are. I really liked how it kind of humbly examined his genius. You know, he didn't make a big deal about it, but it does acknowledge the fact that he is a genius. Like, he's a musical prodigy. You know, he kind of came in and he just knew music at a very young age and just got yeah. it. Like most great musicians, you know, music is one of those things that great musicians always say, you either got it or you don't, period. You can learn it, but you're not going to like, it's not, it's either in your spirit or it's not. Uh, and that movie kind of does that. And I, and I enjoyed that, but it doesn't, it doesn't do it in a way where he's bragging on himself. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, and the biggest thing when telling like a biopic is like presentation. Like, how are you going to present this story? And that's what I was the most concerned about when I sat down to watch it. I'm like, because, you know, the, the uh, Queen movie had just come out, like, a year before, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was like the same year. Before. Yeah, like last year, right? I personally, so, that, I personally like this movie better than the Queen movie. I did, too. Yeah. I did, too. And I, and I liked Queen a lot. Yeah, um, me, too. What do you, who do you think had the better performance, Rami or, El, uh, or Egerton? Uh, uh, actually, I shouldn't have an opinion on the on the fact because I didn't watch, I didn't watch Bohemian Rhapsody, but oh. I do know that that Rami did, um, he did uh, what's the word? It was lip sync, like it was uh, Freddie Mercury's vocals mm-hmm. under his singing. But with Eric, he actually did sing. And from the few things I've seen of of, of Bohemian Rhapsody, I could kind of tell that it's him, you know, lip syncing, like it's yeah. not him doing the voice. So it, it, it hides the, it, it, it helps with the illusion better when you believe that he, he may not be Elton John, but yeah. you do believe that he's singing because he is. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. I didn't consider any of that stuff watching either movie. I didn't know. You know what I mean? Like, I just assume that they're all lip syncing anyways. Yeah. But I did realize in the middle of Rocket Man, that that was his voice. That was not Elton John's voice. Only because I'm so familiar with Elton John's music. Um, but he did a great job. He was amazing. And he, he, mm-hmm. he very much made it his own too. You know what I mean? Which I'm su- that was a little shocking to be honest with you. Cause I'm like, wow, like he was allowed like liberties to kind of make this music his own in a way and not just like stick to the Elton, like the best Elton John impersonation he could do. Right. Uh, right. I, I, I didn't dig that. Um, I like the movie, man, a whole lot. And I would probably watch it again, all things considered. Um, you know, biopics on rock stars who are still alive, you know, can always like, well, how are you going to end this thing? You know? But I really dug how they ended it with the music video and stuff. I thought that was super dope. I actually, it was hopeful. It was very I, hopeful. I, I actually, right after uh, I saw the music video on the credits, I saw the actual music video because I wanted to see how much they matched up. And too. Oh, it's like so on point. Yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> that's how you know that's how you know a movie is good when it makes you go makes you like research more. Yeah. Look for stuff more. For uh, sure. I actually saw I started seeing because the other thing I didn't know was that he had a writing partner. I had no idea. Uh, but that's that's very common these days, you know, like Drake and Cardi B and like all these people, they have tons of ghostwriters. Uh, but this one was like a partnership, partnership that he has with this one guy. Uh, and still up to this day, they're like the bestest of friends. You know, you he, can see. he talks about it on the actor studio. He did an interview in the actor studio. And he talked about their uh, their work relationship. And he's like, basically, this guy. Uh, pounds out the lyrics first. He writes the lyrics first to no music and then hands them off to Elton John who would always be in the very next room over. And he just give them, they give him the lyrics. And he says he would just start playing with it. And he goes, uh, uh, Rocket Man specifically, he said they wrote that in 20 minutes. Damn. <laughs> 20 minutes. Because they didn't work, they don't even work in the same room together. They work in rooms next door to each other. So one guy's writing, and then he just hands him a piece of paper, and then he goes to work. Yeah, which they kind of mentioned in the movie where the guy is like, "There's no way that you guys don't live in the same spot." You yeah. know, like like you guys have such great chemistry, and you guys aren't flatmates. 
I liked all that stuff about the girl liking him and them trying to like stay in the, the flat or whatever. Like I dug all that. That was all like pretty cute stuff. Yeah. And also him finding himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Cause like, it, like I think guys, like, I, I, I'm sure Des pretty much said it. Like it's basically a movie of, of self-discovery. Like you're, you're on the journey with him figuring out who he is himself. And then at that moment where he does give the love that his former self needed, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, because especially since it does deal with like him also having to accept that he's a homosexual, you know, and be open about it and accept that. And it's all about like you, you, the only person who's going to give you the love that you need is going to be yourself because no yeah. one's going to just give it to you, you know. Yeah. I, think um, the, I think the one thing that this movie didn't cover, and this is just my speculation based on what I saw after the movie. Uh, was that El jo Elton John more than likely, more than likely, I have no proof, no nothing. This is just based on what I researched afterwards. More than likely, Elton John was a creepy guy. He was, oh, creepy. Really? He was, he was creeping on people for sure. Guarant I mean, there's only one scene that he's like trying to come, in, come to his like, uh, the guy that's writing his lyrics. And then he's like, hey, hey. Like, I love you, but as a brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's, like literally, that that's literally the only scene that they show Elton being that way. But I guarantee you that that guy was that way throughout his entire career. Because I saw, I saw a, a video on YouTube of him doing carpool karaoke uh, with James Corden. I got to check that out. I, I didn't even know they did that. Yeah, they did it. And... And then uh, at, the, at the very end, like very slightly, like Elton puts it very slightly. He goes like, uh, James Corden, my future husband. Like, but he throws it like very like, you know, sneaky, creepy, like uh, somebody that has some type of finesse will do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. And once I saw that, I'm like, this dude, this dude got down. This dude had like yeah. no, no restrictions. And even, even today, he's kind of a little little out there you know <laughs> yeah, that, that was one of the things that i had um that i wish the movie would do more like show things like that like make it a little weirder because it was it's i just felt like i'd seen the movie before like i, I just wish that they just went like completely out there yeah because even yeah. the few moments where you do see like um like basically like the the human um um uh, instinct and car uh, carnal you know like uh like you know, desires, like even him going in that whole uh, sea of people, like half naked people, even that, like I felt was really tamed. Like, yeah, you know, it was tamed. Like the whole movie felt very PG-13. Yeah. Have you guys seen the movie, The Rose? No, I don't think so. No. It, it, was, it. it was based, huh? Never seen it. No, never oh, seen it. It was based on um, Janis Joplin's career, but um, it was written for like, it wasn't her character, but um, no, I, I do I I have seen that movie. Yes, actually, yeah, I do yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know how how they they made the character more like ambiguous, like she wasn't likable, but she was just real. Yeah, yeah, which like, made the I, ending. Go ahead. It sorry. seems like um like the 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 director want wanted to keep him in a favorable light, which is okay because it's a mainstream movie. Yeah. But, um, but I just wish that it was just a little more edgy. Yeah, well, yeah. so, like, it, do it doesn't help that Elton John is still, like, around, so yeah. you can't get away with that. Great. Right. But, yeah. like, but no, that, that movie, oh, my God, like, it's so fucking crazy how, like, from one to fucking 100, that movie goes, uh, Rose, like, because, like, even the ending, like, you, you guys should watch it, like, where, where, El where, the, where the Elton John movie kind of shied away from that shit. They went all in on that movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet the reason why this movie was a little bit more tame was because Elton John was alive, you know? Yeah. If he, if he was dead, this movie would have everything. <laughs> it oh. would have been like, how can we put everything there? 
Um, also, he produced the movie, so. Yeah, so he probably went like, ah, take that off, take that off. Yeah. <laughs> that he, he worked with Ed, Ed, uh, Edgerton before in the fucking Kingsman movie, so like he knew the actor <laughs> who yeah. plays him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Something else I didn't know about his career was that he started off working with Motown artists as they developed in London. Oh, uh, that was yeah, that was... I like that. Was that. A good scene. Yeah. I had no clue, uh, and that's really important to me because I'm from Detroit, and just two years ago was my first time ever going to the Motown Museum, and there's so much musical history at that museum, and I mean Motown was like the only music that mattered for a while in America. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was the sound. It was the soundtrack to America. Soundtrack to like the civil rights movement. You know, soundtrack yep. to the '60s. And I mean, I wasn't around back then, obviously, but, and I kind of had an idea of that because that music is so dear to the culture that I come from, especially in the city that I come from. Yeah. Uh, I had no idea that Elton John was like whittled in there somehow. That's amazing yeah. to me. And even like, I don't know if the, if they took liberties with the movie, but like you, they were the first artists to actually accept him for who he was. Like they didn't give a damn. Like, nah, you, you, you're cool with us. Like, you, I would <laughs> imagine that to be true, though. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, like, because they, they were outsiders in their own country. Mm -hmm. And then they went to another country where they're outsiders again. So who are they to discriminate against anyone? And, yeah, and uh, a couple of members of the band were gay, too, right? So yeah. why wouldn't they be the first to accept them? And I dug that, too. I dug that. The whole movie was really good. I don't know if I have any bad things to say about it, honestly. To me, my favorite character, and this was like a very minor role, but yeah. it stood out so freaking much to me, <laughs> was the owner of the troubadour. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, like guy, that guy was the perfect representation of the 70s. Like, what's up, uh, man? Come and here. And the man. perfect representation of the troubadour. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's that's Cali right there, man. Yeah. I <laughs> love the, that a, 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 a venue owner that was all. <laughs> Bro, all he needed was just a, to do like one bump of cocaine, and that's it. And <laughs> it would have been the perfect role for him, you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, man. And uh, quick question: Do you think? Do you think? In my opinion, it's a no. But do you think that without adversity, we get great people? Because, for example, as we saw with Elton, you know, he wasn't from like a, the wealthiest of families, you know. There's a lot of people in London that, you know, they, they've been living in poverty for the longest time, especially back in that day. Uh, but he kind of had to go through all of that in order to become a musical genius. Because if he would have had like the approval of his father and his mother, like being with him and everything, I don't think he would have chased that. Yeah, uh, right. Because he kind of chased that in the sake of approval of his own parents and stuff. Uh, so Does that's everybody my everybody agree with that? Well, yeah, because like I feel like all like all great artists and great people. The only reason why we know them and why they are all up on top is they fucking fought for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, only those who are willing to fucking, like, take a stand and, like, just, like, try their best to go through shit in life, they'll be the ones who be recognized, you know? Yeah. So, I'm going to take the contrarian opinion. Oh, Isaac, go ahead. What are you saying? Oh, um, no, that, that was the part that resonated with me the most was because that's how I ended up going to L.A. was, like, everything – prior to, to my moving just went to shit and that's what propelled me and gave me like the drive to to make the the move so i from? san diego not okay. not too far but yeah yeah i just assumed you were from here you got cali flavor all over you but that makes sense oh really <laughs> yeah yeah thank you uh, <laughs> um so I, I i disagree and i'll tell you why uh i don't know if you guys have seen it yet but uh like when the pandemic first started, I watched this Miles Davis documentary on Netflix that PBS produced. And there's a great story in the beginning of the movie where Miles Davis is at his first day of class at Juilliard. And the teacher 
he says, like, the first thing the teacher is talking about is he goes, you know, the reason Negroes are so good at jazz music is because they've had pain and suffering and they can feel the music in their soul. There's no way you can truly be great at jazz. All you guys are just can do here is hope to, you know, learn and be technically good. But you'll never have the spirit of a jazz musician because you haven't had the pain of a Negro. And Miles Davis raised his hand and he says, um, he says, I come from an upper middle class family. I've never had any suffering or pain in my life and I'm going to be the greatest you've ever seen. Oh, wow. And like he said, he, and he never came back to class after that because he thought the oh. teacher was full of shit. Um, so that, I'll say this. I think you can be great without it, but I think the, or I think you can be amazing without it, but I think the greatness comes from adversity. Like you have to have endured something and then gotten over it. Because if you don't get knocked down, we never truly get to see what you were made out of. Right. You get all the talent in the world. But there's also that story like in Amadeus, if you've ever seen that movie, where uh, Mozart is taken care of by uh, the royalty because they, he, they know he's a genius at three years old. Yeah, yeah. Right? So he's just a, a jerk because he's been living in a lap of luxury since he was three and had whatever he wanted. He doesn't know much. He's just a dumb party animal. Uh, who just likes women and to eat cake. You know what I mean? Like, but he's still a genius and we'll never forget who Mozart is. True, mm -hmm. true. So, you know, who knows? Yeah, that's that's true. Who knows? I guess it's up to the individual, right? Yeah, I think if you're a genius, you're a genius. You can't you can't quantify it whether you're born rich or poor. I think most people are born poor. That's why we get poor geniuses. And then think about all the people who are geniuses where their potential never gets realized. Mm. Yeah. True. True. Uh, yeah. What was what? What were your favorite songs of the movie? Well, probably that Tiny Dancer one. I don't know the name of it. Tiny Dancer. That, that's the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I'm standing, definitely. Yeah. And me too. I'm still standing. It's so hopeful and energetic and <clears throat> I mean I, I could I put that move or excuse me, I put that song on my workout playlist after the movie. Yeah, so did I. Cool. So did I. I think for me, I don't need, I don't know the name of the song because like I, I don't I don't know listen to a lot of Elton John songs. Or like I do and I just don't know the names of the song. But Same it's here, <laughs> the one that that Bernie sings when he when he finally tells Elton like hey like I'm like until you fix yourself bro like I'm gonna go mm. you know that one the sad song yeah <laughs> yeah I don't wait how does it go oh man I don't even remember <laughs> but I felt like that was the most powerful moment in the movie where he's saying he's going back to uh to plow or going back to farm or something like that oh I like that part the image, the like, the thought of that was really nice. Yeah, I don't know the name of that one. Yeah. I also like uh, Leviathan. No, if I'm not mistaken, I think they used that for like the montage or whatever, uh, where it's like, uh, and the people read that a god is dead in the doo doo doo. Yeah, yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, yeah. It's turning around and everything's going all at once. Yeah, I, I've yeah. dug that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Well, I've always liked that um that duet he sang. So like, yeah. uh, what was it? What's the name of it? Break my, don't go breaking my heart. Oh, don't go breaking my heart. Yeah. Is that Tina yeah. Marie? Who is that in there? I think it was, because I had it on, on a caption, closed caption, and I think I read that. Okay. Also, one one big topic, well, let me say my song real quick. Mine is that, uh, uh, I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life that you are. <laughs> World. With you in my world. Yeah, I like I like that song a lot. Uh, tears. Almost every time I hear that song in my life, <laughs> tears. The first yeah. time I think I ever heard that song, I was on a road trip on a bus, basically with a bunch of people I didn't know that I was working with, 
and we were like in the middle of some cornfield and that came on my headphones and I'm just on the bus like with my head on the window like crying for like no reason. <laughs> that must have been nice. It was nice. I'll never forget it. And I, and I, yeah. it's one of those moments where you're like, take a snapshot. Right. You're having a moment. The mental, yeah. Yeah. Snapshot. Totally. I've been there. Well, that was a good recommendation, JP. Let me let me ask you guys a question. Um, how does this movie compare to other biopics you've seen? I think it's up there. I, I was reminded of Walk the Line a lot. Haven't seen but, that one. Oh yeah, like because it, I mean, it just seems like a lot of these uh, biopics, like they all have the abusive father, and they're trying to uh, overcompensate for that or try to get their approval. Yeah. But this one, this one was uh, like a more like visual and artsy um, style, which was a good departure. But um, I don't know. It, it's up there. It, it's a good movie. It, it's definitely up there. It's definitely more on the tamer side, but I think that's also because that's Elton's personality is just fun and unapologetic. Yeah. So like, like I, I know like, they probably, I, I, I could imagine they took a lot of liberties of like what actually happened or like how bad things got. But like as, as a biopic, like uh, it's, it's, it's weird. It's different because like it's also a musical at the same time. So I see it more as a musical than a biopic, to be honest. And um, I mean, the one, that I, the one that I could think of that's even close is the Selena biopic with a, uh, Jennifer Lopez. And that one was fucking gold. Like, I really liked that one. Yeah. Selena says bus. <laughs> Selena's. Selena's. <laughs> my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put like, this up in my garage. It's going to say Selena's. <laughs> Selena's says bus. <laughs> but, like, but, like, it did carry the message really well, like, what it was trying to, like, say. So like when it comes to that, like actually having a message, but also about someone else's life, it was pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. To me, again, it's the same. I agree with the sentiment of everybody. I put it. I put it up there. I definitely wouldn't put it as my number one biopic, but uh, it's up there for me. It was half musical, half biopic, because I think the first half of the movie was like very musical heavy, uh, but then the second half was more like. Let's get to know this character more and explore his mind a little bit. Uh, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, and then th there were so many, there's still scenes, and I, I haven't seen this movie. Like, I saw it literally like a week ago. Because uh, I saw it like literally the next day after we started reviewing or whatever. And um, there's scenes that still stand out to me. Like, I remember the scene where he ended up marrying that woman oh, yeah. and then the mother made that face of like what are you doing like you're gay <laughs> like what is this <laughs> that to me was so freaking hilarious and so that was great uh, and you know I, I liked his mom a lot too like i thought uh bryce dallas howard i thought she was great as the mom mm. she, like she played the role enough for you to like actually hate her and she did it well yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like I like movies where other characters can shine, especially characters that don't have necessarily that many scenes. Yeah. That you still remember like, oh that was great, you know? Like I still I remember little characters here and there. The manager stood out. Mm -hmm. Uh that guy that screwed him over. Uh and that gave me a personal thing of like something that I, I uh I remember when I was a kid. I said, when, when I'm older and I, I'm pursuing the acting thing and doing the whole deal, I want to learn also about the business of acting because I don't want someone to take advantage of me. And this like showed the clear example of someone literally taking advantage of someone saying like, I'm going to make money off of you even after you're dead because <laughs> you signed this contract. Yeah. And that guy literally just cared about the money. That's it. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> okay, uh, I got one more question for you guys. Um, 
what is what is your favorite biopic? And if you have one, who would you want to see a biopic made of? Damn. Hmm. Uh, I'll go first because I think I have it. Uh, I think my favorite biopic thus far is Ray. It's between, well, I, I put Ray first. The second one, I will put uh, Hector Lavo, uh, which uh, Mark Anthony played Hector Lavo, uh, famous musician. Uh, I've never seen that one. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good movie. It definitely, Ray, Ray is better, but this one is still really good. Uh, I I think I don't I don't know the specific name of the movie. Mike Big just called Hector Lavo. I don't know. Uh, but that's that's a really good movie. Uh, and then the biopic that I would like to get seen made and made in like a really good way because this biopic has been made, but it wasn't made, I guess, to the extent of that what it could be is a Jimi Hendrix documentary. I mean, not documentary biopic. Mm -hmm. uh, which biopic was his? Are you talking about the one with like Andre 3000 in it? Or yeah, they've done that, it a couple times pretty poorly. Yeah. So basically every time, the, the one that I saw was the Andre 3000 one, and that one sucked. Yeah. Uh, majority there was also one with Wood Harris. Hmm. Or Wood Harrison or Wood Harris, whatever. I think it's like Wood Harris. Harris. Yeah, because I think the, the reason the one with Andre sucks so much is that they had the perfect person. Like, Andre 3000 would have been the perfect Jimi Hendrix to do it. But the problem, was, the problem was they couldn't, like, get the licensing of the song. And that's the reason why the whole movie went just like, well, we're going to make a movie, but we can't use the song. So it was just like a bummer to even make it. <laughs> they didn't use any of the songs? No, they couldn't get the licensing. Oh man, that's so. The, the Hector Laveau movie is called El Cantante. El Cantante, yeah. That that movie is really good. All right, throw that on my list. I never even heard of it, man. Yeah, it's really it's really good. It came a few years after Ray, because Ray was like the initial inspiration of it. They went. Is, like, uh, oh. is that where he met J Lo? Were they married when they did that? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I think yeah. Some some stuff like that happened between that shoot because I think J Lo is in the movie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and she's on the poster cover with them. Then yeah, she's in it. Uh, yeah, for sure. It was like with some other woman left her one with J Lo. So you said those are your favorite. Did you say who you would want to see a, a biopic made of? Jimi Hendrix, but better. Hendrix, like, right, right, like, right. Like, Hendrix, a, Hendrix. like a really good one, you know, because I'm a big Hendrix fan. Uh, maybe a Mac Miller one. Why not? I think he... That's interesting. Yeah, I think he's on that point that he could get one. What about you, JP? Uh, man, for some reason, my mind just went blank. <laughs> so I so I just googled like biopics. I'm like, which ones have I seen yeah. for sure? And the two that are coming out is uh, Malcolm X and My Left Foot. Um, like um, because um like who's who's the fucking actor in My Left Foot? Daniel uh, Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. Like he fucking like oh my god! Like the amount of work that he took for that one guy. Also like I got to learn from both of those movies because those uh, historical figures. I didn't know who they really were, even Malcolm X. I didn't know, like, I had no idea that he was actually a um, uh, Muslim uh, preacher and how kind of that was a, well, not a Muslim preacher, a Muslim uh, minister. minister. Yeah, minister. Like, I had no idea about that part of his life and him, like, learning, like, all that stuff. Well, um, back in the day, also, um, but if I could, like, I'm sorry, like, I feel like, I'm not being too articulate right now, <laughs> to be quite honest. But if I were to catch one, like, I saw, I haven't seen the film, but I did see uh, Jim, uh, that, uh, uh, the behind the scenes look at Jim Carrey doing Andy Kaufman for mm. that bio picture. Uh, I haven't seen, I, yeah, I haven't seen Man on the Moon, but like, I kind of want to see like the reverse of that. Like someone has to do something about Carrey then. If, you, if he's willing to go that fucking nuts for Andy, like someone has to, to use the same energy for Jim. <laughs> you know what? I think um, when it's all said and done with Jim Carrey's life, 
I think his movie, uh, his life is going to make a fantastic biopic. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm hoping that Jim Carrey has a, I guess, a second or a third act left in him yeah. where he just like wows the what? world again with something more he can yeah. do. I mean, I know he's a fantastic painter and he's working on that right now. And, you know, but I hope he can get back to like just another like maybe two or three movies that just blow us yeah. away. Kind of like how what uh, Eddie Murphy and, um, and uh, Steve Carell, what they're doing right now, because I think they're in that moment yeah. in their careers. I don't think uh, Carrie has gone that there yet, you know, but definitely would be, would love to see what, what, right. they, what, they, what it does yeah. with that. Like, what is Jim Carrey going to do when he's an old man? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I want to see Jim Carrey as a legitimate old man in a movie, right. but a comedy. He's going right. to do Bruce Almighty 3, bro. Oh, is man. He's going to do Bruce Almighty 3, The Mask 3, uh, Dumb and Dumber 3. God. What about you, Isaac? Um, well, I, my favorite biopic, if it, like, if it has to do with music, would probably be Selena. But um, Ed Wood is probably my favorite biopic. Which one? Ed Wood. Oh, Ed Wood. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Interesting choice. Great choice. I love yeah. Ed Wood. It's fantastic. Yeah, I didn't even I consider Ed Wood as no. a biopic. I forgot about it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's just, it's quirky and it's, um, it, 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 it just like the message is great. You know, you don't have to make, um, you just have fun with what you're doing. It doesn't have to be liked by everybody, but, but which yeah. oddly enough, he has like a major cult following now. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause I feel like that movie almost like rocket man. We're almost kind of made in the same, like the, the movie complimented the life of the person that it was based around. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. I'm going to have to see that one. I've seen one that of one. my favorite Tim Burton movies. Did it, I didn't even know that was a movie. I, I'm literally just finding this out. Oh, oh. Ed Wood is so good, man. Uh, Johnny Depp is fantastic in it. Martin Landau is fantastic. Sarah mm -hmm. Jessica Parker is fantastic. They're all great. And it's great directing. It's so funny. Like, there was a line in that movie that, to this day, I still do. It's when... Um, everybody's annoying him with like details about how to make the movie. And they're asking him just regular, he's just so excited <laughs> to make the movie, but he's getting tired of people asking him regular directing questions, just standard technical, nothing crazy. Just regular, like, Hey, do you, where do you want me to set up here? Where should the lights go? And he goes, I don't know, do it. You know, it's like just <laughs> whatever, just normal stuff. And then uh, somebody comes to him with something really important. He goes, good, great, go to get him out of his face. And I just, I was saying good, great, go for about a decade. That's the way Johnny Depp delivered that line. Oh, yeah. well, that's added to my list. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Um, oh, okay, wait, my, my movie is Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I think that's the greatest biopic I've ever seen. Um, and I really liked uh, Mungo. Maybe as a, a second. Uh, that's the one about Genghis Khan. Oh. Um, is that the one by Akira Corso? No, no, no. Uh, it's, it's not that old. It came out like maybe, I don't know, eight years ago or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, not, it's not that old, but maybe longer than eight years, maybe like 10. But mm -hmm. it's pretty dope because I didn't know anything about Genghis Khan. I just knew yeah. the name. You know what I mean? And uh, I really like it. It's, it's, a, it's a subtitle movie. It's, you know, I guess they're speaking Mongolian or Chinese or something in it, but it's dope. Um, I think, I don't know who I would want to see a biopic made of, though. Um, I asked that question to you guys because I didn't have an answer, and I wanted to see what you guys said. A Prince one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but a good, well-made Prince one. I, I don't want to see a Prince one because that character... It would be really disappointing unless someone kills it. Oh, you know who I would want to see? I want to. See, I would like to see a Sammy Davis Jr. movie. Mm. That's who I. I wouldn't want to see a Frank Sinatra movie. 
No. Unless you're going to do it without flaw, if, I wouldn't want to see it. What about a Dave Chappelle biopic? I'd rather just see another Dave Chappelle movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or a Dave Chappelle stand-up more than a movie. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, which movie? Like, Dave Chappelle is not really known for his movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did that yeah. special. Another special would be great. They like the his specials are like events. His specials are like American events. They are. True. There's, there's going to be more coming. Whenever Dave Chappelle has a special, everybody just sort of stops what they're doing and they watch it day one. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then it blows up on social media. Yep. Well, people going like, he said this problematic thing. Yeah. What it is. Uh, did you guys see that Tupac uh, biopic? Uh, no. No, I don't, I don't think I did. I know a train of time, but I heard that one didn't do so well. Did you guys, yeah. see, the, did you guys see the Snoop Dogg biopic? There is Definitely one. Not. I, think, I think so. I feel <laughs> like I watched the Tupac biopic, but I also don't feel like I remember any part of it. Yeah, that's that's my reaction to it too. I, I, a good director needs to be a part of these. And like, what's the name of the Tupac biopic? I think it's one of his songs. It's the title of one of Cali Love. All Eyes on Me. Yeah, so. yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's the name of it. Sounds like it. Let me look that he up. And actually, looks just it. like him, but the the actor couldn't really deliver. Have I seen this movie? Straight Outta Compton was good. Yeah, that, that was, was good. Yeah, but that was a good director, F. Gary Gray. Guess I never seen it. Yeah, Straight Outta Compton was really good. Benny Boom is basically a music video director. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, I guess some kind of way I, I didn't watch it. I remember when it was uh, when it came on HBO. I thought I was gonna watch it. Maybe I started it or something and didn't finish. Yeah, I think I think like one thing that makes either you have to have memorable scenes mm -hmm. on a biopic, or you need to have like crazy visuals, like Rocket Man or something, in order for, for sure. you to like really. Because I'm even even I I'm going like I I haven't seen Rocket Man in like a week. And like, I still am remembering scenes of like when he's gonna kill himself, and then there's people coming into the pool. Yeah. The whole deal, the and there's like a kid singing below. Uh, oh, I take a I take Mongo off my runner up. Uh, Raging Bull is the second my second oh, favorite uh, biopic. That's a biopic. Yeah, that's Jake LaMotta. Mm-hmm. The, the the boxer. What about what about a biopic of Jeff Bezos? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just watch some. No. Some <laughs> motherfucker get money like yeah, a fuck ton of money. Yeah, his desk and make money all day. <laughs> like I'm gonna sell books <laughs> online and I'm gonna fucking do same day delivery. Watch me. I'm gonna oh. run. I'm gonna run everybody out of business. <laughs> How <laughs> exhilarating. I wanna fuck no man. And then uh, what wanna... about um Wolf of Wall Street? That's a biopic about money. I was just about to say that. I That's mean crazy. if you have Bezos sniffing coke and like eating shit off of naked ladies, sure, why not? Well now he's doing that, <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, you know what would be a good biopic? Rockefeller. <laughs> <laughs> Rich dude, he lived money with you know? class. <laughs> yeah, but, but if I saw a, I would want real, uncensored for real Rockefeller, no bullshit. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. let me see the dirtbag Rockefeller. Let me see the good sides, the bad, the complexity. I got to see the realness. Right. Don't don't sugarcoat it. That's not gonna happen, sure. man. It's Hollywood. Exactly. <laughs> so what, about, gotta... what about an Obama biopic? I'm there's sure already been a couple. That. There's been a few already. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, there was like, one about yeah, him two. and Michelle. Yeah, that one. That one was like well acted, but kind of boring. Um, and then there's another one uh, that 
he's in too. There's two of them. I mean, he's not in, but there's two of them. I, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, any closing remarks on Rocket Man? Uh, if you want to, if you want to learn how to love yourself before your daddy does, have a fun watch. It's a good, it's a good fun watch. <laughs> I'd recommend yeah. it. Yeah. Love yourself. Love yourself exactly. before anybody else does. Right. Same here, Same man. You are. Unless you're a homophobe, then don't watch this movie. Oh, God. <laughs> if you're a homophobe, get the fuck off of this video. We don't yeah, want why, you here. Why are you, doing you know watching what? a review? <laughs> if you're a homophobe, watch this movie twice and learn something about yourself. <laughs> exactly. Educate. It's educate. Yeah. Uh, so what we got next week, Isaac? Uh, apocalypse Now. Are you sticking by it? Yeah. I think there's some things to be discussed about that movie. Okie dokie. Love the spell. Well, I, I hear Apocalypse Now is a long movie, so <laughs> strap yourself. Um, but you, there's two versions. There's like a three-hour version and then like a two-and-a-half-hour version. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's, I think there's like three versions of it actually. There's, I think there's a three and a half hour version. Yeah, there's a three and a half hour version, a three hour, and a two and a half. There's yeah. like, yeah, so many. But if you guys have access to HBO Go, it's on there now. Um, yeah, and they have the two hour and twenty uh, minute version. I'm watching. Okay. I'm watching whatever is on HBO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, that's a shorter version. Yeah, I think I'm. Re- I think I'm ready for it because this past not not this past weekend actually the other weekend I rewatched the last two Avengers, so I think I'm ready for it. Yeah, okay. man. Well, this isn't as exciting. Well, I, I you know, but what I'm saying as far as the length, you know. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Like good. Before I didn't have the patience to watch even even watching the Avengers, I was like, man, am I really gonna watch this whole thing? Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. But I was like, all right. I'm and you did. It. I you did. watched the whole thing. The whole thing. And I'm probably not <laughs> never going to watch it again. <laughs> good movie, though. Pretty good movie. Yeah, yeah, Very fun sure. and entertaining. That was your first time watching it? No, no, no. My second time. <laughs> okay. I, I watched it first in theaters. But I haven't okay. watched it in a long time. Uh, but I remember even in theaters going like, man, this is a long movie. Yeah, I had to take a pee pee break watching that movie, and then I had to find it illegally online when I got home just to watch the one scene I had missed. Oh, God. This one scene, man. Yeah. Well, Apocalypse Now is next week. Gang, gang, to then finally get to Jason's pick. Oh, no, uh, I can't. Yeah, man. Uh, that's it for Cinema Club. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, like, do all that whole thing. Uh, social media, guys, if you want to drop it, go for it. Uh, follow me at JP Serino, uh at Twitter and Instagram. You can find follow me at Jason underscore Eccles at um, Instagram and Twitter. I'm a uh... Isaac Alex Isaac underscore Alexander underscore V on Instagram. And I am at Steve Des TV, but that's irrelevant. Follow Oya D Miller Network at Oya D Miller Network. Anywho, that's all for Cinema Club this week. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye bye. Peace out. Peace, 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 peace. <laughs> Hey, I'm JP Cerno. Thank you for watching Oye Demo Network. Please click here for additional videos and don't forget to subscribe. That's our new theme song. <laughs>